Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of What Ted Says, where it's always time to get a fatter wallet and a bigger net worth. That's what we do here. We talk about personal finance hacks, social media entrepreneurship, and just some fun shit from time to time. But today, we're going to talk about business mileage. So many people in this gig economy, they drive mileage. And so many times I see people that do not deduct the right amount of mileage from their tax return. In many cases, it's not the IRS who's cheating them, it's them who are cheating themselves. And we're gonna stop that from happening today. Now, let's just talk about mileage as a whole, uh, first of all, because the tax rules changed last year in there's a form called 2106 and if you were an employee of a company you used to be able to deduct your mileage on that form 2106 if it exceeded two percent of your adjusted gross income but that is gone does not exist anymore so you can really only deduct business mileage if you have an llc or you're a 1099 and actually take that off your tax return now at irs.gov you can go there and you can typically take this year in 2020 and it will change year to year if you see this video after 57 and a half cents on a mile to give you perspective last year it was 58 cents on the mile but think about that if you drove 10,000 miles and you took 57 and a half cents on the mile that's going to be five thousand seven hundred fifty dollars of deductions so it can be meaningful if you're a gig worker that made 20 or thirty thousand dollars but you don't want to get audited, so you want to be able to do this right. Okay, so let's talk about the guidelines here about how this works. You simply cannot ever, ever take your personal commute to and from work. So if you're working for an organization and I have to drive 40 miles to work and 40 miles home, even if you stop for that cup of coffee at one of the favorite places like a Starbucks or a Dunkin' Donuts, you simply can't take that mileage just because you stopped and said you did some business and then you went to work. It's really part of that normal commute. But if you're in the gig world and your office actually is a home office, it's a bona fide home office, qualified as a separate space, one where you really could take the home office deduction, then the rules flip and you can actually take that mileage. So imagine I was an independent videographer or I was somebody who was a photographer and I had a legitimate bona fide home office and I had to travel to one location where I took my pictures, I'm still going to be able to take that mileage. That's very, very important. If I have meetings that I'm required to attend or if I have conferences or I'm just meeting prospects or clients for lunch or dinner, I'm able to deduct all of those expenses. Also, if you have trips to job sites that you're actually going to a job site and then you return back to the home office, you can deduct those expenses as well. See, part of this is fact and part of it is sort of the science of knowing where beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And it's important that you set your meetings right. And it's important that you document right because ultimately down the road, the IRS is gonna ask you for that documentation if in fact you get audited. But I find more often than not, there are a lot of people who simply don't take the right amount of mileage. Now, there are some good programs to be able to track your mileage overall. You can do this anywhere as easy from doing it in a notebook or an Excel spreadsheet, or there's a great program and tracking system called Everlance, www.everlance. You do have to pay a small fee for this, but it's a great place to immediately put in the mileage so the printout reports are ready from the time that you have to file your taxes. Now, if you made a mistake and you didn't legitimately take the mileage that you should have, you can basically go back and file an amendment for three prior tax years. And that allows you to go back and fix those mistakes or you can set up a system uh, going forward. Remember, when it comes to deducting business mileage, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't take the actual expenses of the wear and tear in your car and the gas that you pay at the gas pumps and also take the mileage at the same time. So you're really gonna need to do an analysis and say, was the wear and tear in my car potentially the parking and the tolls, all of that, the actual expenses was at more or less than my mileage. But if you follow the rules that I gave you today and you really document your situation, you too can save a lot of money 
when it comes to your business mileage. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it saved you some money. If you're a freelancer, a contractor, or you have an LLC, it's a great way to actually pay less in taxes by taking the mileage that you should have. So click the subscribe button if you've never seen what Ted says before this. And as always, share this with your friends, your other gig economy workers, 1099 contractors, because we can help them too. Hope you enjoyed the episode of What Ted Says.